It is so great to have you back on The Money Show here on the Rise News. I am Adesua Omoron. And I'm Rafai Yosei. Good to be here again, Adesua. Thank God it's Friday. And you're looking all <laughs> bright and colorful and smashing today. I Thank you. you. As, well, as always, <laughs> anyway. Thank you, Rafai. You look deeper. Now, fashion, they say, is everything. Experts say the Nigerian fashion industry is worth billions of Naira. If well developed, has the capacity of generating many profitable companies and providing a variety of jobs to millions of Nigerians, especially the youth. Though over the years with hard work, Nigerian designers grew the industry into a force to reckon with, but this is not still enough. And some will argue the challenges are as complex as the patterns on the prints of the fabric. Mm. Well, joining us this morning to discuss this is Mudiaga Clement Enajemo, popularly known as Moody Africa. Great to have you. Thank you. Great to have you. Make work. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can, can you just tell us your journey? Because Moody is everywhere today. Uh, Moody designs for the King of Morocco, designs for heads of states. Mm -hmm. You've VBI done it all. In fact, British. as a result of your design, you were the honorary guest of the King of Morocco recently. That's to show that your design is everywhere. And the King of Morocco, when he visited Nigeria on a state visit, mm -hmm. came to your office, your outfits on the Lagos uh, mainland. So apart from coming to see President Mohamed Buhari, could spare time to come and see Moody. Mm -hmm. So you've had a checkered history. Can you tell us through all of this? Well, um, let me start from here. I started from scratch. Mm. It was very rough. No structure, no godfather, no capital. 1993, to be precise. I moved into Lagos in 1990. I worked with an uncle of mine, not too far from Seven Up, where you have this star church today. Mm. We were there for about eight months. I lost the job. And I'm living on good will. Mm. Two friends, I was able to raise enough money. And I registered myself with an established roadside tailor mm. to learn how to cut, no ego stitch. Mm. I started from there. So, well, I would say 26 years, to be precise, by, I started in 1993, September, so it will be 26 years by September of this year. Mm. And that was how you started? Yes. Led from a roadside yeah. tailor? Yes. But you are not roadside today. You, know, um, you are global. By the grace of God, I think what I have in me is a bit to create, to imagine. You don't learn creativity. It has to be in you. You can only learn tailoring. Why I went to, the, I, to learn is to know good stage and know how to cut. Yeah. So let's talk about what, what really inspires you. Um, you. You're talking about the ability to be creative, but something must have inspired you, apart from creativity, to do this. 26 years after. I, I, I would say, apart from the talent, discipline is key to the humility. In this part of the world, people most of the get, easily get carried away with sources. But people, when people say, oh, Moody is very humble, I see humility as a way of life to me. You just want mm -hmm. to be arrogant. And if you check, with your respect, generally Nigerians are very arrogant people. Mm -hmm. So once someone who's, who tends to be normal, you say is humble. Humility is normal. So what has really helped me, two, three things, the creative ability, mm -hmm. discipline, and humility. Is there a reason why Modi only clothes men? 26 years, didn't you think you should diversify or there was no market for the women? Why Techn men Technical only? question. When I started, I started with making clothes for men and women. Uh -huh. I stopped making for women 10 years ago. Why? Because I want to, be, I want to focus on the men alone. Why? So I can understand the, the man-body chemistry. If I see a man today walk into my office, I'll know, I'll know your size immediately. To know, I can tell you from, tell your waist, tell your size over the years. So I've been able to nurture myself and establish the fact that look, we can focus on the men alone and do well. There are designers that make clothes for only women. We don't make for men. Hmm. Let's, let's, let's dial back to your past. 1990, you came to Lagos, lost a job. 93, <laughs> lent roadside tailoring. But where you are today, building the structure and the brand involved a lot of things. You're an entrepreneur, 
Your works and your prints are everywhere. Your label, your stitches are sold in big, you know, fashion stores all around the world. What was the backstory for building a business from a corner store? I think a lot of fashion entrepreneurs will want to learn from you as they watch today. I, if you check these days, yeah. social media is really, is helping. When, when we were working, when I started, there was no social media. We actually made our name through hard work, creativity, pure work. We grew from either through referrals, people refer you. But these days, you see a lot of upcoming designers to focus more on the packaging, which is the social media thing, and the loose substance. Social media is good. I do social, social media, so, but most of the time, when you focus more on it, it makes you lose that substance that you're supposed to be involved yourself in doing the job. Mm. So, the business angle. How did Moody transit from being this fashion icon from being at that corner store? Two different. One, first of all, is you must be creative. Mm -hmm. You must keep thinking. I think every minute, I have to keep thinking. And above all, if I make money, I put money back into the system. Mm. That's why I say discipline is key. And above all, I get to my office 7 every day, 7 a.m. in my office. For the last 26 years? Yes. There was a day I got to the office quarter to nine. What, I, what happened, I branched the bank to send money to my mom. An elderly man, immediately I just parked my car. An elderly man who was walking past just saw me and he asked me a question. Somebody, uh, hope no problem. Says, said, why? You just simply check your time. The people that they monitor you, they see you, they learn from what you do. Discipline, until you do, discipline is key. It's very important. Well, yeah. earlier you said you started up without no capital. Yeah, no structure. No, no structure. Go, no good for that. And I'm wondering how is that possible? Um, I also read an interview you did recently with a print media, and you said you often wonder how you open outlets in other countries without loans, if I can just take a bit of that quote. Yeah. He said, most times when I'm through with the opening of an outlet in another country, I begin to wonder how come, how possible without a bank loan? It goes on and on, but let me stop here and ask you really how possible. Because at the rate of unemployment, and the few who do try to start up, you, the first problem or challenge you hear is there's no fund, there's no support. But you did it 26 years ago. How did you do it? I would say hard work. Hard why, work. Why, 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 say, why, let me say Yeah, because hard work, I'm for me, I'm for me. In practical terms. Let me tell you. They are young designers today. They get to their office 10 o'clock in the morning, 11, they delegate from home. I put in, I get to the office 7. They don't can be at the same level. Are you not being too harsh on there with Lagos no, traffic no, and all no, of that? Madam. Okay. With due respect, you have to time yourself. Mm -hmm. I get to the office seven every day. I'm married to my job. So what you do is what you put in, you get. It's in the Bible that I will bless the work of your hand. It's what you put in, you get. My lifestyle today, people see me, they think that I'm into other things. Mm. They don't believe that you can't really do one to do it well. Discipline yourself, be hardworking, and you make it. It is possible. So let's talk in practical terms because yeah. this is almost philosophical to me. Yeah. I want to start a business. Okay. I, I wake up, even living in Lagos, I wake up before five to, be, to beat the traffic and be at work. But I do need money to fuel my car. I mm -hmm. need money, I mean, to buy clothes. I need mm -hmm. money to, to start a business like yours. I mm -hmm. need to buy a machine. Mm -hmm. The cheapest I know is not, nothing less than 20,000 naira at the moment. Mm -hmm. How do I get that money? How does hard work get me that? That's the story I want to hear. How, you how said no movie? loan, no capital. Yeah, how? Okay. I'm coming. Let me, let me start. When I was working, simply to get my first job, the money was coming. Aru MD came to my rescue. You shall move further. I mean, that's yes. the actor. Yes, my first job I got, he paid for the first job. How much was it? 47,000 naira. As of 1990. 1997. From 93 to 97, I was still working from my one room apartment, K2. Okay. So my first job, Anthony, I ran to him, he rescued me. After paying for the shop, for three months, I didn't move in. I have to start working to make money to pay, buy for 
You buy carpet, do the painting, buy silly fan. After that, I started working with one machine. I make money, I buy materials, put them back into the work. It's a process, 26 years. There are designers who want to be like, want to be like me today, just only four years they put into the work. It's a, it's a process. The likes of George Armani, they are almost 70 years. It is, they're still working. Yeah, we're always in a hurry. The first thing you need to do if you want to go into professional, first of all, we must have the idea. Are you creative as a designer? If you are creative, the idea, you have the passion. If you have the passion, then you must have the drive. So it has, it's a PDD. You must have the passion, drive, and the discipline. Mm. After the creative ability. So when you moved into that store in 1997, what happened next? So I worked for, I was there for two years. After paying the two years, you actually paid for two years. Okay. After the two years lapsed, I couldn't raise money to pay for an additional one year. With your hard work and your Yes, PDD. I had money for six months. Mm. I ran to the landlord to help. Just pleaded it possible to give me, let me pay six months. I said, no, if I don't pay six months, I should quit. So luckily for me, I was able to raise money. He gave me one month grace. I raised money, I paid for the balance. I started saving money, 15 naira every day. They call it a large or Yoruba mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. I was doing it. A particular day, a friend of mine walked into the shop and he saw me, I was giving money to the the man, he said, ah, somebody, I can't be doing this. Do this. It's a bit too low. I said, brother, I need to do this. I know where I'm coming from. That's why I said, discipline is key. So from there, what, what happened? So I started working. I started yeah. working, referrals, putting money back. I moved into two bedroom flats. Two bedroom flats, I started occupying two flats joined together. Hmm. The day something happened, the day I pay for the flat, I was in one room apartment. Did I pay for the three bedroom flat? My elder senior brother, middle senior brother was with me. When I was rising, paid to pay for this. He asked me a question. Somebody, ah, why do you want to move to a three bedroom flat? Why don't you manage one small space and get a bigger apartment for yourself? I said, no, brother, no. I know where I'm going to. Business first. Nobody goes to me, nobody comes to my house. People they call me, come to the office to see me. So my business first. And so you see all of this lacking in up and coming or you know, young designers in Nigeria? With the determination, respect. the- With due respect, yes. So not, not all of them. Okay. But some of them, when you tell them, mm, structure first before the, the fame. The, the fame, maybe you're trying to deprive them not to be famous. No, no. You can be famous through good work. Okay. We, I also want you to press further on that story. Yeah. So, 1999, mm -hmm. you moved in, 1999, 2000, you moved into mm -hmm. two bedroom yeah. for your business. Two bedroom to five bedroom. To two five flats bedroom. Together. Yeah. So, what happened next? So, when, when I moved to that two, two flats joined together, I was still in a one room apartment. I bought my first generator, 45 kVA, 1.7 million naira. I was, still I was still in one room. I need to consolidate all my work first. I bought the second generator, the same amount of money, the same 45 kVA. I was still in one room. Mm. Apartment. I don't have anything against comfort, but I needed to consolidate all my business first before I now moved to two bedroom flats. So it was after you had done all so, of this? Yeah, after I done that, I started working oh. until I now moved my first job outside Nigeria in Ghana, Accra. Thank you. Talk about that, your story from nothing to something. Now, I mean, it's Moody Africa. You clothed presidents, VVIPs. Uh, you were on that point where you had moved to the store, uh, but you were in discomfort in your personal life. You decided to build business first and the importance of that. Well, uh, so um, the day a friend of mine asked me, mm -hmm. a question I would never forget. He said, they asked me in the pigeon English. He said, ah, Moody, this work, what you do when you want to buy a car from this work? He asked me the question. Then he was feeling, from what I was feeling, ah, I'm sure you can make it through this job. But right from time, I don't have the feeling of it is possible, without this possible mentality. You must believe in yourself. Most people, they don't have that self-confidence. It is possible. Most have that confidence that it's possible, it's possible. 
anything is possible, just make sure you focus yourself and start working. Work hard, you make it. So there are those who mm. discouraged you, but there was Richard Mufedamijo, yeah. the actor who gave you a chance yes. and gave you money for your first show. Mm. Sometimes you speak to entrepreneurs now and they tell you, you know, we have this business idea. We come together, manage the funds, but nobody tells us really the experience we are going to go through. So there's that vacuum of um, mentorship. Don't you think that that's a problem in itself? Because you have said here already, you know, we are impatient as a people, get rich quick syndrome, Instagram life slaying, they want to have those yeah. big stores yeah. in four years. But how about the mentorship gap? Are people like you filling that gap? We will try the best. Look, I, like me, I do that almost every day. A young designer walking into my shop mm -hmm. for me to advise him what to do, the next step to, to be. So I asked him, as we were discussing, he saw my career bag. He asked me a question how much it cost me to produce the career bag? I said, at this level, you're thinking of, you're going to, at this level, your career bag you're looking at, hmm, career bag should be a priority now. Right, it's the structure of what you want to do. So most times they misplaced priority. When you talk to them, calm down. But look as if you're trying to try to suppress them to be no, it was it, there's a time for everything. I put in 26 years. You just four or five years, you want to be the same level with me, it's not possible. It's what you put in you get. So God is not partial, it's what you put in you get. Let's start talking about big bricks. Yes. I know a lot of break did come. I think you, you worked along with Frank or should you for uh, Miss World? You did some work around that area. When did the big break start to come? When I started opening outlets outside Nigeria. When was the first outlet? Accra, Ghana, 2010, 2009. I'll be in Accra, it'll be 10 years by next month mm. in Accra. After Accra, I moved to Nairobi. Yeah. Nairobi to Johannesburg. Johannesburg and Nairobi the same year, 2010. 2011, I opened Dakar. But Dakar did do well, so I shut Dakar down. So last year, I opened in Abidjan. So you in Abidjan? In Abidjan, Accra, Accra, Nairobi, and Johannesburg. Why, why did you pick these locations? The um, first of all, you in West Africa. You know, we're more, in terms of African fashion, we're more, when you say top there. Mm. In Kenya, they're more westernized in terms of the way they dress. So it's a it's a, it's a, it's a it's a that I have to take. It took me like two years before I taking money outside Nairobi. But they were not get they were not used to the clothes. They were used to this way of wearing jacket and t-shirt. So you must be patient to be wait and endure for the time to get we start making money. In all of this, sorry, yeah. in all of these countries, which was easiest for you to start up and do business in? I would say Ghana. Ghana. Yes. What was different in Ghana? What was Ghana offering you? Um, I mean, we have the population here. Okay. The time I opened my shop in Ghana, that was 2009. It was free entry, okay. no tax, so mm. tax free. So I, do, I, I entered Ghana when it was free tax policy. So I just kidding. That really helped me. And each con any country I go to, what I do, I go to the embassy, Nigerian embassy. The ambassador, he or she must give me the blessing before I take any move. Good. Mm -hmm. And you have members of staff in all this, like in Ghana, how many members of staff? There are three staff in Ghana, in Nigeria, two Ghanaians. So uh, let's say across board in all mm -hmm. these countries, in Johannesburg, South Africa, mm -hmm. you have over 20 or 30 staff. I mean, how, how, what, I, I want to know, did anything prepare you to run a cross, uh, you know, continental business from the Place you started off from. I mean, what's the mindset behind running an international business? Because you're really a multinational. Thank you. Um, I would say, you know, fashion is universal. Mm. They don't speak language. Your clothes are good, they're good. That feeling that they may spread is key because there are people in outside Africa, outside Nigeria, who want to wear dress in African way. There's a vacuum we need to fill. When I, went, when I went to Nairobi, I saw that you know, this space, that we needed to fill the space, so I said, let me come in. And luckily for me, the ambassador gave me the go-ahead and an open shop in Nairobi. And mind you, everything is made in Lagos. That's All the clothes so are made in Nigeria. I just export them to, what to do is I'm ready to wear. Just go to the shop, pick different, you buy different sizes. 
Lagos is seen as the fashion capital of West Africa. Sometimes they say Africa. But what is your own opinion, and how would you describe the sense of style here? Uh, it's a, it's a, well, if you check the notion, I think I'll, I'll say it's, it's, a, it's a true because we were, we were very fashionable people. Mm. I were very dynamic, different culture, different tribe, different values. So it, it, it helped us to create ideas. We can pick something from the eastern part of the country, give a twist to it, we take it out. Pick from the, the western part, give a twist to it, we take it out. So it's very good for us. It's a big market. And moreover, if you check around now, most Africans want to tend to dress like Nigerians. Mm. Mm. My little experience, mm. they want to dress like Nigerians. And we're setting the pace. And if we can all come together, uh, this, we can gain a lot. Look at our music industry, we're taking mm. over. Mm. Comedy, taking over. Movie, taking the next one is fashion. But yeah, but yeah, I want to ask you this. I mean, that's why you did talk about the point that he set up South Africa, mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. without getting a loan from the bank. Yeah. Woody, you must tell us how you did it, Thank please. You. Thank you. Can you break it down okay. in details for us, how you did it? When I opened Ghana, I went broke. If I open any outlets, I go broke. I have to start saving again. And what I did then, after I opened the, after I registered my company there, the ambassador will give me a lawyer, I register my company there, get an auditor, pay for a shop like one year, then I don't move the clothes there, get the staff, they start running. It's not, diff it's not as difficult as that. Once you have the vision, it's not as difficult. Did you approach the banks or you just have something against bank loans? I don't have anything against bank loans, but the process of getting the loan here is too tedious. I don't have that time to waste. I want to have the money. Let me just go ahead. So I, instead of taking loan, be paying interest. Let me just go ahead. And your financial discipline too. How did the king of Morocco, mm. because the king of Morocco happens to be your biggest advocate now, how did that relationship come about? I think that, well, I, I got a call from uh, Intercontinental Hotel, just here, behind here. On Saturday morning, a staff called me. What is it? Yada Yinka or Daddy Emmy called me. I'm now to Moody. I say, Yes, okay, well, are you aware that the King of Morocco is in town? I said, To me, I wasn't aware. I said, Okay, well, the King is coming to pay you a visit, coming to your shop in Antonio. What time do you open? I said, We open nine. But I get to the office seven. But officially, we open nine o'clock. At about 11.30, and advanced team. Came to my shop. They look around, so I check around for the you no know, true security checks and the rest. So they went and they came back around to four in the evening. He spent about one hour ten minutes looking around. There and there, he bought seven outfits, took his measurements, exchanged numbers, started communicating. When you talked to him, did he know you before? I mean, how no, did no, no, he? I, didn't. I think I, he asked questions mm. to the staff. He needed to visit. visit few places in Lagos, and luckily for me, the points my name are part of the place you want to visit. How is it like working for people, uh, influential people such as the King of Morocco? Um, their style, do you project what you want, or do they, what exactly is it? You must have a picture of what you want for them. So is it a matter of projecting your personal style on them? What is the moody, fashion brand, really? What does it stand for? First of all, that question you ask me now, as a client, if you walk into my, if you walk, you call me, what I do is interpret what you want. Okay. I read you, check your mindset, your philosophy to life, your profession, that will determine what I'm going to make for you. Mm. Very quickly, mm. talked about your shop, and mm. a lot of people tell me, I haven't been there, so it's fantastic a building, the style, and you have uh, some interesting pictures on the wall, pictures of some who have died, pictures of where you're coming from. Did you design that yourself? And what's the story behind the shop, quickly? Well, I designed that structure you see there. Mm -hmm. I did everything, exterior, interior. I did everything. What, what happened, I think I got a property through GT, GT Bank. They came to, I wanted, wanted to buy the property. Finally, so, a bank in the story. Uh, that, that was the first time I took a loan from bank. And they gave me the, just, the they, they sponsored it after like mortgage. And after paying, they handed over the document to me. So I did that project for about one year, the renovation job. It's an old structure. I just did the remodeling to my taste. And then when the opening day, 
actually after the commission the place and name the street after Moody Lane. Moody Lane, you know, and there. And um, African Magic came from South Africa, did a documentary, and they were they have voted the best purpose built fashion house in Africa. Mm. And it was your design. So yeah. you're also an artist. <laughs> I'm an artist. And so you say you're an artist first. No, I'm, an, I'm an artist. I'm just expressing myself through fashion. I'm an artist. What is the future of the Nigerian fashion industry? I mean, with these challenges of the young ones who can't wait, who don't have that vision, what is the future like? What do you see happening? Hey, well, I, I would say, let me be positive here. Okay. It's a big, the market is getting bigger. That shows that the people want to wear more of Nigerian clothes now. So more, my advice is just get your structure right. Be creative. Just be firm with what you do. You make it. The market is huge. People want to wear something new. Keep coming out with new ideas. People are keen to what you do. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see the Nigerian fashion brand competing with the likes of uh, luxury brands such as the Gucci's, yes. uh, the um, Help Me Now? The, the products that give on cheese. Uh, yes. And... Yes. You do? Yeah. How would that happen? It's possible. Most of my clothes will see this. Ah, I sure you made in Nigeria. It's, it's possible. Most, we must first of all start to believe in ourselves. Mm -hmm. So once once the belief is there, and you as a designer believe in what you do, how that mm. self-confidence that it is possible? Mm. It, it is possible, happen. yeah, it is happening. And that's where mm. we'll leave it. On that positive note, many yeah. thanks for coming on Thank the show you. today.